Um, okay, so let's start. The protocol, again, this is just the guideline, you know, you do whatever you want actually, but um, we usually start at around 20 milliampers. So the stimulator can go up to 100 milliampers. The average value where you get um, the maximum display, uh, so the maximum contraction, it, it depends on a few factors, but it is around 60, 70 milliampers. Uh, but sometimes it can be even 20, so it depends on, you know, the type of skin, if the skin is dry, you will need a little bit more current, excuse me. Um, if you have a, a little bit more fat tissue, you will need a little bit more current. If you <coughs> have the electrodes which are dry, um, you will need a little bit more current. So because you never know uh, how much, you start low, let's say around 20. Usually if you start with 10, you will get flat line. So you're beneath the threshold. Um, so again, we start at 20 and then we gradually increase, usually by steps of 10 milliampers until we get maximum response or until we get the supra maximum stimulation. So that means that I will increase until I get two responses which are exactly the same even if I increased the current. So let's try it. We'll start with around 20. Let's go. So I don't know if you saw the, the muscle movement. <coughs> so this is you know, the response that we got. Now to look at these numbers wouldn't make any sense because obviously you know you can see the contraction time now is 60% slower than the average because we are just we just stimulated you know one small small part of of the muscle. So what we'll do is we'll go to around 30 measure again. So this was the previous one. This is the last one that I did. So I I continue the same protocol until I get two responses which are exactly the same. So for that reason, so the default number of previous measurements is one. Now we have six. Why? To just to demonstrate how the signal is increasing. So first, second, third, fourth, but I prefer to use just one previous just to see if there is any difference between previous one and this one. <coughs> Measure again. Still some difference here. So what you want to get, you want to have the complete overlap up until here. If there is some difference later on, we are not so much concerned, but the first part of the curve should be completely the same. So, still a little bit of a difference, not a big one, so probably we'll need one more. Yeah, and that's it. So we went from 70 to 80 milliampers now and we got completely overlap of the two curves. So even if I would continue, I would get the same response. Sometimes um, it's even it's, you have to be a little bit more careful. Here it's not a big problem because you don't have deep muscles that will interfere too much. But if I would measure the strychnemius muscle, which is thin, and if I see that the first part, you know, the first peak, the, the strychnemius muscle is the same, and if I continue to increase current, the second peak will continue to increase. That's the solus co-contraction that is, you know, increasing more and more. I don't need that. So I can stop when the first peak stops increasing. So that's it. What we get here, we had seven measurements. The last one is on top. This is the, the one that I'm interested in. So I will click save last. Everything else will be deleted. I will be left with the last measurement here. So what do I get as a feedback in this case? It says, okay, the muscle is 4% faster than the average value, so his value is 24.6, the average is 25.7 or 8, and displacement is just about normal, normal, let's say optimal. So it's just 4% different than the average. So what we have here, we have a lot of green color, especially the first one and the last one, so I would consider this quite a nice response. So that's one muscle the protocol for measuring one one particular muscle. Okay, can you turn around? Yes. Are we 
we'll use this. Yeah. Fix your legs a little bit. Okay. Okay, bend your knee, push into my hand. Relax. So how's your hamstring workout? Tight probably. Okay. I did do some yesterday. So. <laughs> okay, we'll see. There are so many things. Okay, this one again it's okay, more or less about the average, but it is a little bit stiffer than the average. So, like I said, usually, of course, you measure more muscle if you want to make a muscle profile. Why would you, for example, do a measurement like this if you would have some sort of issues either with hamstrings or with, with your knee? or also with the quadriceps muscle. Of course, I would measure left and right to also see you know, if, if one side is injured to have a reference values of the healthy side. So in order not to, you know, to take too much time, we will just stick with this side. So when you finish, you just generate the report immediately 